Hi, Macedonia. It's good to see you all again, um, back from vacation. Hopefully you're uh, noticing how well rested I look. Um, and uh, this is my, I'm actually back at work today. And so a uh, little bit of stress, but hopefully it doesn't show through after a week relaxing. Uh, certainly was enjoyable and, uh, and was glad to, glad to go. Uh, but man, happy to be home. You know, it's just nothing um, as, as beautiful as the world is out there and as many wonderful things as there are to see. Uh, I just have to say, there's just no place like home. Um, I just love it here. So the, uh, but, you know, being off and everything, uh, I think I mentioned a couple weeks ago uh, when I posted the Wednesday video on Sunday that uh, I was losing track of time. Uh, gonna getting worn out, I think. Uh, last week, I decided to take uh, a break and took the week off from posting videos as well. So uh, we've we're picking back up here. Uh, we are in James chapter three, so we're just gonna pick up and keep right on going. We finished the first two chapters, and uh, and man, I'm just amazed how how fitting the whole this whole section of scripture is, and the lessons here for not only just just as our life as Christians, but in what we are going through culturally right now. Um, <clears throat> and forgive me if I, I clear my throat. Uh, allergies are here, and uh, and I got a break from that while I was in, in Florida, too. That was nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, I come home and, and back to the pollen. So uh, I'm, I'm a little congested. The uh, but, but in James chapter 3, uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the first twelve verses, and um, you know as we as we step through this, uh, you'll I think it'll it'll become apparent how how relevant this is to what's going on in our in our society right now, um, not related to the virus, but related to uh, more well some related to the virus. If you've seen some of the conversations on social media, but more so to the cultural conflict going on right now. And how much of it is uh, fueled by our words and the words that we speak harshly or or out of uh, lack of necessity, uh, unnecessary words, if you will. So uh, I think that becomes apparent some metaphors there, but um, I think it'll become it'll it'll kind of pop out as we as we read through it. Um, again, James taps a lot of uh, Proverbs and uh, Jesus' uh, sermons in order to get his material, uh, the basis for it, which is great because uh, if you're going to have Scripture that is uh, teaching you something, that it's based on Jesus' teachings directly, um, is, is the best place to go. And, uh, and really, we should be able to find all of our lessons in Scripture tied back to something that, uh, that Jesus or the Father taught themselves. Uh, that's is kind of the, the continuity there and the, and the significance. So uh, in James chapter 3, these first 12 verses here, um, there is a, a tie, and I'm going to read that real quick, to Luke chapter 6. So if you're crossing over and, and referencing as well, um, feel free to pop over and read this one. Uh, but in Luke chapter 6, verses 43 through 45, Jesus is talking about trees and fruit. And we've heard people talk about judging others and being fruit inspectors. Uh, we, we know that our, uh, the fruit of our, our works is evidence of our faith and some of these ideas and lessons that come through. And Jesus is speaking here about how you can tell what's in a person's heart by their fruit. Um, and it says in verse 43, For no good tree bears bad fruit. Nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruit. For figs are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Now, we makes sense to us that you're not going to go out and find a thistle and, and pick an apple off of it or a pear or something good to eat. It's going to be something you want to avoid or we're going to try to kill the weeds. Um, and we're going to protect the fruit trees and, and our gardens and, and the things that bear good fruit. We're going, to, we're going to protect those and take care of those. But it, his last, uh, Jesus' last statement there 
out of the heart the mouth speaks. Uh, so we, we see the things and there's the fruit, but our words speak volumes, uh, pun intended, about what's in our heart. And if we are, um, if we are filled with anger and hatred, uh, that's what's going to come out of our mouth. And you've, you've seen people, or you've known people who, who have one image that they portray, and you know, they'll, they'll go about their life, uh, and occasionally you'll see them caught off guard and another person comes out, and it's, it's very different. We can put up a facade and, and pretend to be one thing, but uh, we find out that in moments of stress or strain, oftentimes our true self comes out. Uh, and you can watch people and hear the way they talk to others. Um, I've uh, often heard the statement, uh, you, can, uh, you can tell how a man is going to treat his wife by how he treats his mother. Uh, if you've not heard that before, welcome to that statement. Um, I've seen it played out. Um, if someone is disrespectful to their mother, then they are probably going to be disrespectful to their wife. Um, and it's just it's just the nature of it, and and I've seen this played out over and over again. Again, it's not a hundred percent. You can't take a, a statement like that and, and cast it as a as a blanket. But Jesus does, in in many respects, make statements similar to that in that out of the heart the mouth speaks. So if your heart is evil, is full of evil, that's what's going to come out of you, uh, even if you try to pretend it's something different. Uh, we see the example of Satan himself. He is. His, his heart is full of evil, um, and yet he was the most beautiful of the angels. So there's this, what feels like a contradiction, um, beauty does not imply goodness. Um, good things are beautiful, yes, um, but evil can be appear beautiful as well. Um, and we often find after we're down that path that it wasn't, wasn't what we thought it was. Now, jumping to chapter 3 of James uh, and these, these first 12 verses, uh, this one is one that for many of us cuts deep. Uh, it's going to, you know, you, you're going to feel the sting here from uh, gossip and rumor and, and angry words and uh, harsh words and, and just things that are naturally part of us because of our sinful nature. And... Uh, the truth here is painful. It really, really is. It. I had to. I've had to check myself many times. Um, statements. I. Uh, I can be very cynical, uh, and and make statements sometimes that are uh, not terribly kind. I guess is the best way to say it. Uh, you know, they 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 may feel like something funny to say in a conversation, and yet. Uh, it may hurt someone's feelings because it is uh, was not well thought out, and uh, or the implications of the statement that I'm making. So I've I'm sure over the years I've hurt many people by some of the statements that I've made, and so this this scripture really is is a call out for me personally that I have to deal with. Starting in verse one, and there's 12, 12 verses here. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. I'll pause there for a second. Have you ever had a moment when you say something and then you immediately think, I can't believe I just said that? Like your tongue has a mind of its own. Like you, like all, all the things that you would have chosen to say in that moment, that is not one of them. Um, and it could be because uh, you felt foolish, uh, or it hurt somebody's feelings, or it was just an awful thing to say. Um, this is, you're, you are experiencing what I just read. You are experiencing a moment in which all of you is being directed by such a small part of your body. Your, your tongue has great potential for 
healing and kindness and glorifying God, and we're going to read about that here in a second, it also has great potential for harm and, uh, and dishonoring God, uh, very, to put it very bluntly. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire, the rest of verse 5 there. So you give that context. A, a single match can cause an entire forest to go up in flames. Uh, we can do the same thing with a word. Uh, and verse 6, And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creatures, can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. If you've ever been in a situation where you you got a hold of, of you, you bit into fruit that you thought was going to be good but was instead bitter, or, uh, of course, we were just at the ocean, and this one uh, is relevant. You ever get blasted in the face with a wave and get a mouthful of salt water, uh, that is an awful experience. Uh, but I will tell you, fresh water never tasted so good as it does after you get a mouthful of salt water. Um, you really appreciate the difference between the two. And and the two are not compatible with one another. There, I've actually uh, read and heard, told that uh, in Hawaii, you know, surrounded by ocean, and you think, well, water, where do they get their water? Water comes down out of the mountains in Hawaii, and actually in some places the springs are under the ocean waves, so below sea level, which seems really odd. Uh, and, and, you know, well, that would be no good because it would mix. But it, in fact, it doesn't immediately mix. The water coming out is fresh. And uh, native Hawaiian uh, Hawaiians would actually take a, a jug, swim down to the freshwater spring underwater, open it up over the spring, let the spring water fill it, and then swim back to the surface and have a jug of fresh water because the two did not immediately mix. Uh, it takes time. And so you you get this idea that uh, the two are not compatible. And, and the Bible tells us that good and evil are not compatible. So much so that God, who is the ultimate good, evil cannot exist in his presence. And that's that's the contrast. So you our tongue itself, it talks about not being tamed and is set on fire by hell. It's almost like... God created all of us, and this isn't the, the case, it's our sin nature coming out in us, but but you could almost imagine it like like God created all of us and then Satan stuck our tongue in our mouth and and decided to use it to try to, to ruin everything. Um we of course the imagery is not you know hundred percent because God created all of us. He created all of us for good, and just like our our nature was not created, we were created in God's image, but that is corrupted, as is the rest of us. Our world around us feels like it's on fire. Uh, not, you know, not the virus, but but the cultural things, the conflict about race, and and no matter what your opinion is or where you fall on this, hopefully you can agree that it feels like our culture is is at war, and I believe Satan's attacking it because. Our culture is one that was built and meant for freedom. We have made mistakes. We have made missteps. Uh, we're still broken people trying to run a system, and things are going to go wrong. What makes a difference is how we deal with it. And can we have peaceful dialogue? Can we have a, a intellectual discussion about how to treat people without our tongues getting in the way, and so much of what you look at. The the reason we stay away from social media in this situation and away from the news and all of those is because all of that is driven by people's tongues, the words they say, 
they get angry and they say hateful things. They they get passionate and they say hurtful things. The we we speak from our heart and our heart is full of anger and frustration and confusion when we get in these situations and when you don't bridle your tongue. And we read in 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 James chapter 1, be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry. If we had more listening and less speaking, we would have fewer problems with our tongues getting in the way. The scripture here tells us that we bless the Lord and Father with our tongue, and with the same tongue we curse those who are made in his image. We do not understand fully the value that we possess because, and I, and I really believe we don't understand what it truly means to be made in, in the likeness of God, in his image. Because if we really appreciated that, we would understand the value of everyone else around us. Uh, and clearly our world does not place the value on people that it should. Uh, I'm making a very declarative statement there. Uh, it is not one group. It is not one political party. It is not one race that is causing all of this. It is the fact that all of us are broken and all of us devalue people uh, and do not value them the way we should. Our example should be Jesus. We should look back at the Bible and, and how Jesus treated people. Jesus never discriminated against anyone. Anyone. He, he loved everyone. And, and that is the model that we should be following. And again, I, I emphasize the listen more than we speak because when we close our mouth, it bridles our tongue. That is the best way to bridle your tongue. If, it's, if your mouth is closed, you can't say things. And, and I know I'm being very specific and talking about verbal words, but your, your, what you put in social media, what you put in text messages or emails, or however you communicate, you can write a letter. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, people can, uh, tongue here is speaking very literally, but it, the meaning behind it is our words that come out. Um, we just have more ways to communicate now than James did in his day. So I would, um, I would tell you to think on this, give it some serious thought. Think about the words that you're using and how you use them. I mean, I do, and, and this really convicts me to be very cautious uh, about what I say and what I do. And um, but, but also encouraged because, do you think we are made to bless others and our words can do that and God made our tongue he made us to be in his image and so when we express that image we can lift and build others up it is not purely an evil thing so um, I want to encourage you thank you for coming along on this journey uh, and and participating in this for all of those of you that are watching um, I look forward to seeing you on Sunday I'm excited about that and uh, and gathering together again. I uh, hope God blesses you and you have a wonderful week.